is that they've called the game. So the uh, it appears so they're comfortable enough. They're confident enough that there hasn't been any scoring errors, and uh, Riverside have reached the target. And so they're not going to play on for any more, just to make sure that they have actually won the game. They're shaking hands, and so they have decided that, that is the end of the match. Well, as uh, the batsman walking off, and the players are coming on. Yep. So. Well, I mean, this is a, a very bad result for Diamond Creek. Um, not just uh, not just the result itself, but the manner in which it was uh, defeat uh, was um, achieved. Because I mean, it's, it's one thing to get into a bad situation and have your team behind the game. I mean, we all have that situation, but then it's a question of how do you actually get yourself back into the game? How do you actually work yourself back in? How do you stop the bleeding? How do you start to rebuild? How do you launch counter-attacks? How do you actually uh, uh, do all the good batsmanship things that a team needs to do? And throughout this game, there was no point at which Diamond Creek seemed to realise and understand the scope of how much everything was going wrong and to then say that this was the, the moment when they were going to launch a new plan to recover the situation and get back into the game. Instead it just seemed to just drag on and on and on where they just didn't know what to do, they weren't doing anything if any different, and it just became a sordid mess of sorts. Because um, there was no actual moment that arose where they sort of decided to change their tactics or maybe become more aggressive, because they were scoring at two runs and over through most of the innings, and it didn't reach the point where they decided to play lots of expansive shots. The most aggressive they got was when they charged down the wicket a couple of times. Uh, and then when they did decide to play aggressive shots, it was just a scoopy shot to the fielder to get out caught. An actual aggressive shot to score a boundary or to pierce a gap and an extra run by being more aggressive with your calling that sort of stuff never arose at any point. And so even after the 10th over, the 20th over, the 30th over, uh, nothing really changed in terms of how the Diamond Creek team approached the, the, the way to actually score these runs. And in the end, uh, time just got the better of them, and then the wickets got the better of them, and then they ended up with a abysmal score that they did where they were unable to boost the either the run rate or stop losing wickets at regular intervals. So then they ended up getting nothing when they could have at least tried to do something. And I think that's the more disappointing thing. I mean, if they had of, uh, gone through some phases in their innings where they were actually trying some new things, were actually trying to... Uh, bring about a change in the tone of their innings, that would have been interesting. That would have at least shown that they had some match awareness, that they were trying to get out of the situation, that they were looking to find a way to get themselves back in the game, to back take back charge. But that didn't happen. It just seemed to be to go on and on and on throughout uh, half an hour and an hour and an hour and a half before they were bowled out with only a couple of overs to go in their innings. So even if they hadn't have lost those last wickets to get bowled out, they still would have scored uh, something around what they ended up with. And so, yeah, um, it's just I, it's just a mystery about uh, why they were unable or unwilling or unaware 
of what was asked of them by at least the 15th over. By then, there should have been some realization that something was going badly wrong, something needed to change, otherwise things were going to turn to a mess. But it didn't really happen. And that is the most disappointing thing of all. Um, it never looked as if Dharma Creek were actually going to be bringing themselves back into this game and actually trying to find a way of making Riverside work for their wickets. Actually have to chase the ball a lot and actually get a re give Riverside a real workload in terms of how much fielding they would have to do. <coughs> and then similar things can be said about the Diamond Creek um, bowling because straight away straight away as soon as the innings began they had a fielder in the deep and then a fielder in close on um, catching and I don't have anything against that I, I think that um, it's perfectly fine to uh, attempt to use these attacking fielders whenever you want and it's um it's a uh, it's a misleading element of cricket to assume that you uh, can only use uh, close infielders after a certain period of time in the innings but that said there was still the opportunity to use the new ball in ways to actually harass and uh, uh, control and constrain the Riverside team. I mean, the Riverside batting seemed rather comfortable with their situation. I mean, you're defending 69 runs. So, the idea of having six orthodox fielders at point, cover, mid-on, mid-off, mid-wicket, and square leg for a majority of the innings seems rather bizarre. You should have had at least a few fielders saving one and then more attacking fielders in order to uh, constrain all Riverside batting. Make Riverside work really hard for every single run and make this stretch out for as long as possible and make Riverside bleed for those runs. But rather, it seemed to be a pre pre player pre-prepared plan because the fielder at short cover, short, uh, the silly mid-off or short cover or silly mid-on were there and the deep fielder was there for the big aggressive shot and they were there right from the very beginning and that tells me that uh, so that tells me that it was already planned that way. So if a batsman happens to have a certain batting technique that has certain weaknesses or strengths, you can adjust the field accordingly, which emphasizes and takes advantage of those weaknesses and minimizes the batsman's strengths. And that would be the usual way to go about changing your field to make it unusual so that it best suits the batsman you are confronting. But if your field is like that from the very beginning, it says that you haven't paid enough attention to the batsman because obviously the batsman has just come in. You don't know what his strengths and weaknesses are and you're just setting a plan for how you think a wicket might fall. And so you're just, um, you're not searching out and hunting down the batsman looking for weaknesses in his technique, looking for weaknesses in his character and trying to find a way of getting him out. Instead, it just seems that you've already got a plan in place of how you think a batsman might or might not go out and you're just going to go with that and if that doesn't work you'll swap the bowler around for someone else. And so Apart from those couple of plays and misses where the Riverside batsman um, missed the ball or the ball bounced a little bit extra than, uh, than they were expecting, there were no half chances. 
it was quite remarkable that in an innings of uh, 18 overs, there would have been no more than 6 or 7 or 8 half chances where the Diamond Creek players were excited or appealing or, or ooing and ahhing. Uh, it was remarkable how little uh, the Riverside batsmen were challenged and had to face difficulties. Everything seemed to come so easily for them. In the end, not only was it no wickets down, but they ended up taking lots of risks in scoring those boundaries which turned the game around and ended it so soon. They could have easily padded much more comfortably and calmly and slowly and carefully and prolonged the game past the drinks break. And if they had done that, then um, they would have given away is even fewer chances than they ended up doing in this case because they felt so confident that even if they did make a mistake and go out, it wouldn't have made a difference. And so even with Riverside uh, being more reckless or being less careful with their batting than they otherwise would, even then the Diamond Creek fielding and bowling team were unable to actually implement any sort of attack or plan or program that could have taken a wicket or constrained the Riverside batting or done anything that could have uh, uh, put a stop to the Riverside batting offensive. And in the end, this is a case of you get what you deserve because it seems as if uh, Diamond Creek have not put up a good enough performance and they deserve such a big loss. And on the other hand, Riverside have put up an excellent performance. I know I've spent a lot of time criticizing um, Diamond Creek so far and I'm going to get to complimenting, um, complimenting Riverside in just a second. So Riverside definitely deserve this win because of the excellent performances they've done but I think more importantly uh, Diamond Creek deserve this loss because uh, a 10 wicket loss uh, with more than uh, half of the innings to go really is a fair account of how well they play today. Alright, so let's talk about Riverside a bit more. So let's start with their batting. Okay, so their batting. Remarkably in control of what they were doing. And um, there was no point at which they felt unsure of what they were doing. Um, very calm, controlled batting, defending a ball with purpose, going for those quick singles with purpose, running the seconds and the thirds with purpose, and then eventually hitting those boundaries with purpose. Everything seemed very clear. They knew what they were trying to do. They knew what they were doing. They had an agenda in mind. They had a goal and they were clear in what they set out to do and in the end they were able to execute it so well that it comes off as a very comfortable easy victory which is one of those great things because the hard work makes it look easy because everything comes naturally to you even though uh, behind the scenes and inside people's minds that is where the great work of building up a performance comes in and then on the outside because everything is so successful it just appears like it came naturally so uh, you could just uh, you could be naive in thinking that everything was just rather simple and just fell onto the Riverside batsman's laps but that would be misleading because in fact what we saw out there what we saw the diamond uh, the, sorry the Riverside batsman do is expert batsmanship uh, knowing how to keep away the good balls those few good balls that they had to face uh, not being afraid of plotting out a few dot balls and a couple of maidens there when uh, good bowling came and then waiting for that ball to score off that 
patience, that knowledge that eventually the ball to score off will come and if it has to wait for three dot balls or four dot balls be calm, be patient, wait for it and then take advantage of it when it came. Just absolutely wonderful, wonderful, wonderful batsmanship from Riverside. Alright, so then the last thing to mention is of course the Riverside, um, the Riverside Bowling and uh, it seems to be, to have been an all-round excellent performance from them. Uh, each of their bowlers contributed clearly to a set plan that had been formulated through the course of the innings. Uh, every bowler seemed to know what they were trying to do, what they were aiming for, exactly what they were trying to achieve, and then they went out and did it. And so, for example, exactly where the Diamond Creek batsmen were able to score was controlled through excellent line and length and excellent uh, accuracy by the Riverside um, bowlers and then most of the Riverside bowlers were able to uh, either swing or seam or spin the ball just enough that it uh, caused Diamond Creek batsmen difficulty in terms of advancing the scoring. Now there weren't a lot of half chances by uh, during the Diamond Creek innings while Riverside were bowling. Uh, there weren't lots and lots of appeals and lots and lots of edges but there were plenty of missing uh, opportunities where there was thick inside edges that go s straight to the uh, fielder. There were plenty of times where the batsman just failed to hit the ball properly or failed to hit the ball at all and they ended up getting dot balls. Now those obviously are not wicket balls but it goes to something that the Riverside bowling team was able to do which was to perform at a level at which prevented batting from being comfortable and easy. Even though the, wicket, the wickets did not fall through great bowling, the wickets fell through batting batsmen making mistakes and doing silly things. And so the good bowling was there to prevent uh, comfortable stroke play. So even when the ball was a half volley, the fact that uh, the ball had something on it meant that they couldn't score lots of easy runs through it through uh, drives and cuts and so on. And then, that's what kept the scoring rate down. Uh, that's what prevented Diamond Creek from getting into three runs per over or two and a half. It's because most of their shots were not going through the way they were trying to execute them and they would have gotten frustrated by it and then it was just a matter of time before they do something silly and uh, going out and so then ended up being um, uh, 10 wickets to be reaped by uh, uh, the Riverside Bowling uh, not through um, excellent bowling and not through the Diamond Creek batsmen throwing their wickets away or doing something crazy and stupid but uh, it's just a matter of keeping your lines and lengths and keeping your bowling to their or thereabouts and just being patient and working away at it and then eventually you get into a position where the wickets come your way and then uh, because all the groundwork and all the hard work had been laid down it meant that taking advantage of it was the only thing to do and when that happened well hello there getting bowling out your opponents for just 69 was a wonderful and uh, appropriate reward for an excellent performance for the Riverside fielding team. Alright, um, that is my assessment of what has happened and we're just going to take a quick break and then we'll just go through uh, a, a quick recap of what this game involved and then we'll say goodbye. Okay, so just taking a quick break and then we'll come back uh, with the remainder of the post-game show. So this is uh, Channel 8, the local sports network.
loose and broken, but your memory's intact. Well, it's running through your head like an explosion. And the smiles on all the faces of the children in the park are just a momentary loss of inhibition. Or you try to keep it all intact with bubblegum and twine. Well, it's bound to make a mess along the sidewalk. And a sticky wish is weaseled in the corner of your brain. Now it's time to let the weasel talk again. Oh, it's clear as mud and nearly twice as thick. It's out of reach and heavy as a brick. Well, it's quick to make a notion of your rubber gun and motion, and it's getting so much louder every day. What you're saying, what you're saying to me. What you're saying, what you're saying. Just review what we have seen today, the game that we have watched. So, remember that this is uh, first versus second. Uh, Riverside with 4 1, top of the tables. Diamond Creek with three wins, a loss, and a tie second place. So, the winner of this game was likely to cement their spot at the top of the tables, but the loser would risk falling from the top 
and going into uh, the pan pan the, the, the mix, the middle group, the peloton. Okay, so Diamond Creek batted first and things got off to a, a very, very bad start with a wicket falling in just the fourth ball of the match. The score was one for two. Then a reasonably good uh, starting partnership of uh, double figures got underway, but then the second wicket fell at 2 4 14. But then a very significant partnership then of 25 runs came for the third wicket, and it lasted all the way to the drinks break. And then it was only till after the drinks break that the rest of the wickets fell. So the score at the drinks break was 2 for 39 off 20 overs. Although very slow, at least uh, they had all their wickets in hand. And they were had most of their wickets in hand and they were in a position to launch a counter uh, in the second half. Well, along comes the second half and things do not go that way at all. In the fourth ball, resuming play after the drinks break, the wicket, the third wicket falls, the, taking the score to 3 for 39. Then, a couple of overs later, another, that, that was, that was on a wicket maiden, uh, in the 21st over, so the first over after the drinks break was a wicket maiden, and then a few overs later in the 24th over, there was another wicket maiden with the score going to 4 for 45 after 24 overs. So the run rate was dipping below and further below 2. And now, after so much work of building up that 25 run partnership and actually trying to put your team into a position where you could have launched some sort of attack in the second half, all that hard work had gone to nothing and now it was going to be a desperate bid to just try to stay in the game. So then, a 10 run partnership happens before then the score, then two wickets falling in three balls. So the score going 5 for 55 and then 6 for 55. Then, well, when you get, you know, what do you call good and mediocre and average? Because uh, there was then a partnership of, of nine runs. I guess in the context it was a pretty good partnership. It lasted for a few overs, three or four, or three. And then the wicket fell, seven for 64. Then a couple of overs later, the next wicket fell, 66 for eight. And then there were a couple of maidens, and then by the 36th over, the last two wickets were on the chopping block, losing 9 for 69, and then 10 for 69. All out for 69 were Diamond Creek. Ending up batting 36.2 overs, and so going at just below two runs per over, over the course of an almost completed one day innings. So that's a, that's a significant because they weren't blasted out of the water where they were they weren't blasted out of the water where they barely could stay in. Rather it was a much more slow uh, dreaded uh, innings where they just could not get ahead. They weren't going anywhere, their feet were stuck in quicksand, um, and it just drained on and on and on. And then in response, 
in response. Riverside batting. So Riverside started off rather uh, conservatively. After five overs, the score was just seven runs for no loss. But then, uh, when they changed over one of the opening bowlers and brought another bowler in, uh, things started to become easier to score off. And so, by the ninth, end of the ninth over, the score was 31 for no loss, which is going at more than three runs per over. Then, there was a little period where it seemed like uh, uh, Diamond Creek were trying to claw back the game. A couple of good maidens, a couple of tight overs. And uh, so the score was 35 for no loss after 13. So the run rate had fallen below 3 at that point. Uh, but then, from that moment onwards, so from the end of the 13th over onwards, uh, Riverside just flicked up a gear and started scoring much more aggressively, much more comfortably, and in a blink of an eye, the game was already over. So, the 14th over score involved 14 runs. The 15th over, 8 runs. The 16th over, 5 runs. The 17th over, two runs, and then the 18th over, seven runs. So, all of a sudden, Riverside, from having to have some difficulties in how they were going to chase it, in not having everything go their way, suddenly just blew the game apart and ended it, uh, before Diamond Creek really had an opportunity to, to try to make another counter-attack and try and bring themselves back into the game again. And so the, the ending up just batting 18 overs from the allotted 40, 71 for no loss. So there you have it. A 10 wicket win with uh, 22 overs to spare. Uh, this has been um, a remarkably one-sided contest. I cannot remember the last time when we watched such a uh, contest that was uh, over so early, over so miserably, uh, here on Channel 8. But this is what's happened. Now, uh, as I've been mentioning throughout the course of this broadcast, uh, there is still one game to go before the end of uh, before the end of the season. Uh, not the season, the year, the calendar year before the Christmas break. And so, there will be a one day game. And so the pressure is going to be on Diamond Creek for that. Because if they lose, they fall to 3-3 free free from seven games. And then their, their position in the finals is an open question and it's no longer guaranteed which you would get when you have a win loss in the positives obviously diamond now diamond creek still have a win loss ratio in the positives uh, three wins two losses uh, means that um they've still got more wins than losses but i'm saying if they happen to lose next week then everything, their entire project for this season falls apart. And so, uh, after suffering um, one loss in the home and away season before this one, and now suffering this one, suddenly everything they had worked for and they had built up earlier on, especially what we saw on Channel 8 in the first two games of the season, suddenly everything becomes on the, goes on the line. As for Riverside, Riverside have remarkably turned it around. They lost the opening game of this season, and we saw that on Channel 8. And then since then, they've won every single game they've played, and now they've made their revenge known by beating the one team that, they, that defeated them throughout the, horse, the course of this home and away season. And so Riverside not only are in top place, 
but have a very good WL count, have a very large uh, number of points, and uh, will have a very good percentage. And so everything is going their way. Riverside should be very confident about their situation, they should be very pleased with what they're up to, and they should be very confident coming into the Christmas break to win this final game, and then to go into the, the Christmas break with a 6-1 count, which would be remarkable. The difference between first place and then second, third and fourth would be uh, a very large gulf and it would tell us something about the state of the B grade. So that is for Riverside. Riverside are in a position now where they can try to win the next game and then go into Christmas knowing that they have guaranteed a spot in the finals, that they are going to be likely to be top place at the end of the season and have a home semi-final and that's all to happen next year in January and February. So two different teams uh, have very different fates and uh, very different projects coming up not just uh, next round but then come January when we come back after the Christmas break. So uh, there you have it. Uh, there's nothing really more to say about this game. Um, it's all been said. Uh, Riverside have overwhelmingly won and Diamond Creek have been humiliated and uh, the consequences are going to be felt not only next week but in the coming weeks uh, next year. Alright, it's time to say goodbye. So, This is Channel 8, the local sports network, in association with our partners, Beers 99.9 .9 FM, Substitute Radio. I have been Chucka Wilson, and thank you very much for following along through this broadcast. Your support is much appreciated. Remember to like us on Facebook. Uh, share this video, like it, subscribe to our channel, and if you have anything you'd like to tell us, go ahead and send us an email. Well, that's all... That's all I have to say. That's all that needs to be said. It's now time to say goodbye. Okay. We'll see you next week here at Channel 8. Until then, goodbye. you think
think about him Snooter don't care that you sometimes doubt him He just snoots and snoots and snoots and snoots and snoots and snoots oh, Wait, I'm, I'm not done yet Take your coffee Snooter don't care that you love good coffee No He just snoots Snooter don't care that you ride a scooter 